All right, hi everyone. This is uh, Joe uh, from Lowell Observatory. Welcome to Trivia Night. And I'm Victoria, also from Lowell Observatory. Uh, we're both public programs educators up at Lowell Observatory, and we'll be your hosts for our Astronomy on Tap trivia tonight. Uh, yeah, so uh, typically we uh, like to all gather as a group and you know, like to enjoy each other's company while we do some trivia. And since uh, due to certain circumstances, we're doing it live with everyone who can be here with us, which makes it a little bit more awesome, I think. And uh, we're here with uh, Mother Road Brewery, which is a local brewery in Flagstaff. And uh, I think I'll let Vic Toria talk a little bit about Mother Road. Yeah, so uh, Mother Road is currently doing dine-in at their downtown location. Uh, their hours are Tuesday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m., Sunday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., and they are closed Mondays. They are also doing to-go at their Butler location from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. They uh, did give us some guidelines for your own health and safety as well. Um, for starters, please visit them another time if you feel unwell um, at all. But they are sanitizing frequently used surfaces every um, 30 minutes. And uh, they're sanitizing tables, chairs, and iPads after every use. They also have hand sanitizer available and are using um, Sorry, <laughs> they're using uh, CDC sanctioned sanitizer. <laughs> um, they also have six foot spacing between tables so you can maintain a little bit of social distancing there. Uh, they do ask that you don't sit at an unbussed table, order all food and drink at the bar and leave empty glassware at the edge of the table. Um, a couple of notes about how trivia will work for us here tonight. Uh, First of all, you'll need a second device. So go on that second device, go to kahoot.it and type in uh, the pin you see at the center of the screen, 509-339, and that will allow you to join our game with us. We'll wait until we've got a good amount of uh, players joined uh, for us to start. But um, a quick note, any unfriendly nickname uh, that may contain some lewd language, uh, Kahoot will automatically filter that. Um, and we are dealing with a little bit of a time delay um, with this live streaming. It should be under 10 seconds or so, but you might see things pop up on your other device before they stream on YouTube. Uh, so you might wanna keep that in mind. And all of these uh, trivia questions come from one of three Meet an Astronomer talks that Lowell Observatory has previously live streamed. Uh, first up, we've got Dr. Scott Barrows, um, who is mostly about black holes. And then uh, we've also got Dr. Kyler Kuhns, who's about, um, who's is about uh, new technologies that we use on telescopes. And uh, we also have one from Dr. Jennifer Hanley about salts across the solar system. Looks like we already got some people that have uh, started to join uh, the Kahoot game. So we're gonna wait a few minutes so we can get as many people as possible on here and make the competition a little bit more. Yeah, we want lots of competition. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really neat that we're able to do this virtually now um, because instead, you know, maybe we've got people from other places outside of Flagstaff, hopefully. Uh, yeah, like usually when I do the, go to the Astronomy on Taps, it's always gonna be at a local tavern here in Flagstaff. And now we can have people who are fans or members of Lowell Observatory who are like, yeah, we can join too and hang out with yeah. them. <laughs> that's, that's the good part about all of this virtual um, virtual stuff we've been doing is we can at least hopefully reach farther. Yeah. I've seen on past live streams, people from all around the world just watch 
Lowell Observatory and I'm over here like it feels good seeing that. <laughs> yeah that's it's always nice to know that people all around the world are listening to you. It's a little <laughs> scary sometimes though. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we probably got someone from Yuma, judging by Team Yuma. <laughs> Are you sure they're not from Prescott? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to be taking sides or anything, but I'm rooting for Team Rocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know <laughs> if you can fight the sun's corona and win. The corona is pretty powerful. <laughs> oh no, the corona went away. <laughs> oh, there is a solar probe out there right now and I feel like it's trying to and that's the Parker solar probe has been out there about two years now. Oh the other thing if your device goes to sleep it might you might disappear from this this setup that you see with all the names. So if you're like on your phone and, the, and your phone turns off I think it does remove you but then you can come back. There we go. People are coming back. I'm wondering if you close your uh, app as well, it might do the same thing, although I haven't tried that, so. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of variables here. <laughs> so again, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, today we're shouting out a local brewery here in Flagstaff called Mother Road Brewery. And uh, they are currently offering both dine-in and to-go at their different locations. Um, at their downtown location here in Flagstaff, they're offering dine-in. Their hours are uh, between Tuesday and Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, on Saturdays, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. and they are closed Mondays. At their Butler location, they're offering to-go service. And um, that is from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, they ask that you don't go if you're unwell, uh, but they are sanitizing frequently used surfaces every 30 minutes, and they're sanitizing tables, chairs, iPads uh, after every use. They also have hand sanitizer available, and their tables are spaced six feet apart uh, to allow for some social distancing. Uh, they ask that you don't sit at an unbussed table and to order all food and drink at the bar. They also ask that you leave any uh, empty glassware at the edge of your table. So, yeah. As for Kahoot, um, all unfriendly nicknames will be automatically filtered through uh, Kahoot, but um, no need to worry about that. It looks like so far we've gotten quite a few good ones, <laughs> some creative ones too. Bunch um, of nerds. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're all nerds here. I'm a nerd too. Probably why I work at an observatory. Mm -hmm. No shame though. Um, we are also dealing with a little bit of a time delay here. So um, things might pop up on your device where you're playing Kahoot before things show up on our YouTube stream. So I would recommend waiting until the YouTube stream catches up. It uh, should be like five, 10 seconds at the most. And our trivia this evening will be from three different uh, meet and astronomer talks that we've previously live streamed. So the first is from Dr. Scott Barrows, the second is from Dr. Kyler Kuhn, and the third is from Dr. Jennifer Hanley. Another note about Kahoot is it will make you disappear from this screen that you see with all the names if your device goes to sleep, or possibly if you exit out of your browser or app. Um, we're not sure on that second one. But we'll wait until uh, we've got some more people joined in. You can join in by going to www.kahoot.it um, and then entering in that game pin you see at the top there, 509339. And that will put you in this game here uh, so we can all play. We are playing to win. Uh, so our first place winner will, will receive a $10 gift card to our uh, Lowell Observatory gift shop and a $25 gift card to Mother Road. Um, and they have online an online store where you can buy a bunch of different things, including things like beanies and hoodies. Um, and I don't believe you have to be 21 to buy a hoodie. So you should be all right there. 
And then of course, like Lowell's gift shop has some of the coolest stuff. We got all sorts of like cool science gadgets and also shirts and hoodies as well. Uh, it's yeah. always really fun to be able to peruse it. Yes, we have the softest hoodies that have the planet Saturn on them. It's what I basically live in all winter. Uh, so if anybody who hasn't joined yet, we are going to be starting uh, real soon. So you want to get your uh, get your second device and join as soon as you can because you can kick it off. And of course, uh, yeah, we'll give it another few minutes, but we do have two more games after this. So yeah, you can always Don't join. Don't miss the first one. Sorry, what was that, Joe's? Oh, you can always join in the middle of a game if you haven't. Uh, it will allow you. The code's going to remain up at the top of the screen the entire time. You may be back some points, though, but that's all right. It's just practice. I really appreciate the name New. <laughs> so we'll give it another couple of minutes before we get started. Well, we're sad we can't be open up at Lowell Observatory quite yet. We are really excited to be able to do um, fun things like this uh, with everyone. So we're glad and to have course, you all here. Yeah, and of course, we'd like to thank everyone for just joining us. And even if you're not playing and you're just watching because you want to, uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we all learn some new fun astronomy trivia. I'm just I'm just laughing at these names. We got Team Rocket and Team Aqua now. Big Pokemon fans. <laughs> <laughs> and Book. Yeah, I appreciate Book quite a bit. <laughs> it's a solid name. <laughs> All righty, do we want to go ahead and get started, Jos? I think that's probably a good idea. We got we got more than ten players in, so. Oh, we do. <laughs> All righty, so we'll go ahead and start. Um, Jos, would you like to lead this first trivia? I would totally love to read, lead this first trivia. I will also be reading it, but yeah. <laughs> Leading and reading. All right. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is Dr. Scott Barrow's trivia. So. All right, so the first question, what is thought to happen to a person who falls into a black hole? Is it saponification, pastafarian, spaghettification or explodification. Uh, I see 20 seconds left on the clock to be able to answer that. So the answers are coming in. Yeah. Joe, did you make this picture yourself? I did. In the black hole. <laughs> I am really good at Photoshop, obviously. <laughs> you are. All right. No, it looks like uh, got it correct with spaghettification to people uh, guessed explodification, which was personally my favorite answer anyway. Uh, saponification is actually the uh, chemical reaction that happens when you mix lye and oils to make soap. So <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and then uh, looks like the sun's corona is in the lead, followed by Team Rocket and then Amelia in the third. So it's the first question. It's anybody's game right now. And another thing we almost forgot to mention is the faster you respond, the more points you get. So who knows? It might, might go a little bit better <laughs> to go with your gut sometimes. <laughs> but the faster you respond and for correct answers, you do get more points. And then, of course, there's nothing more panic-inducing than that. Uh, trying to answer a question really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But hopefully it's a fun kind of panic. Excitement. You're not getting graded. <laughs> okay, we're going on to the next question. <laughs> In April 2019, the very first image of a black hole was taken with which telescope? Is it the very large telescope, the extremely large telescope, the Lowell Discovery Telescope, or the Event Horizon Telescope? And uh, that is the image by the way, that is up there. That was the image that was taken, the very first ever black hole image. There were a lot of people who, when this first came out, were rather underwhelmed with it, I guess. 
I can understand that, but my explanation to people who are slightly underwhelmed is that uh, this is actually, you know, millions of light years away in one of the most, at the heart of one of the most massive galaxies in the universe. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, seven people got it correct with the Event Horizon Telescope. Neat. Yeah. And uh, the sun's corona is still in the lead. It's the same people, Team Rocket, followed by Amelia, and then Noom and Book. Noom is on the rise, though. Yeah. In 2006, the hit single, Supermassive Black Hole, was released by which musical artist? Was it the Beatles? Was it Muse? Justin Bieber? Or Beyonce? And that is the album cover right there, so... In case I was going to say, you might have given it away a little bit with the album cover. I made sure that the uh, artist's name was not written. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. And then 10 people got it correct with Muse. If you've ever seen Twilight, you know that you know this song pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny, I remember when the uh, first image of a black hole came out, I had this song on repeat all day. I've had this song on repeat for the past 14 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Sun's Corona is on fire. They're still in the lead with Amelia. And then again, Noom is pulling up, followed by Team Aqua and then Team Rocket. Team Rocket okay. happening. So, so the Sun's Corona is not on fire because it's in space. <laughs> that is, <laughs> you know, scientifically. But, it is in uh, fact made of a plasma. Yes, plasma. Oh. <laughs> There's no oxygen in space. Anyways. <laughs> All right, next question. The end stage of the life of a low mass star is called a what? Is it a white dwarf, a neutron star, a white hole, or a black hole? And then uh, we got this lovely picture of a planetary nebula, uh, just for fun, for kicks and giggles, I guess, right here. It's called the Dumbbell Nebula. And that was... Who took that picture? Oh, that was taken with the Lowell Discovery Telescope. Uh, I was part of the, you know, team that took that along with Dr. Phil Massey. I got to give him the credit because... <laughs> but you played a part in it. <laughs> uh, and then 11 people got it. White Dwarf uh, was the correct answer. So I felt, I felt like I was trying to trick you all here because this talk is, was about black holes. So. <laughs> yeah, and for those of you, if you're just joining us, by the way, or uh, if you would like to join in on the game, you're welcome to. Down here at the bottom, we've got kahoot.it. That's the site you want to visit on a second device. And then type in that game pin if you'd like to join us. Sun's Corona is still in the lead with Noom second. Team Aqua is on fire. That's ironic. And Amelia and then Team Rocket <laughs> following up. So Noom and Team Aqua are catching up pretty quickly. So Sun's Corona has got to watch their back a little. Yep. A stellar mass black hole can get as massive as how many suns? 100, 100,000, 100 million, or 100 billion. And then there's a theoretical picture of a black hole right there. Someone conceptualized what a black hole might look like. So. It's a pretty gnarly picture. I love these pictures. I think they're just great. <laughs> Make for good backgrounds. Ooh, this one was all over the place, but 100 so, uh, solar masses was the correct answer for this. So it was a stellar mass black hole, which is the smallest kind of black hole you can find. You know, tiny, a hundred times the mass of the sun. I know, it's not that, it's not that big at all, whatsoever. <laughs> Sun's Corona still in the lead, uh, followed by Newman, Team Aqua, Amelia, and then Book is trying to regain their ground right there. The return of the book. The return of the book. It's the sequel. Book two, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> what is the mass of the largest black hole found so far? Six, four million solar masses, 
999 solar masses and 40 billion solar masses. So again, a solar mass is the mass of the sun. So we generally tend to measure the weight of heavy things in space by comparing it to our sun because that's familiar. And yeah, it was, it was 40 billion solar masses. I believe it was just found at the end of last year. So this is a really recent discovery that was made. That's a real big black hole. Oh yeah, something that I would never be able to conceptualize or fathom. Yeah, for context, uh, how big is the one in the center of our galaxy? I think seven million. It's been a while that I've had to remember that, but I think it's four million. Solar no, mass. Six million solar masses. One of those two. Somewhere in there. It's in the like single digit millions. Yes. <laughs> like not more than 10 million. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sun's corona is really up there in the lead. There's a big gap right there between them and then Neom up second, followed by Team Aqua, Amelia, and Team Rocket. So what it looks like Rosario plus Vampire is the highest climber. So we might see them appear on the on the board later. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and then what is a population three star? Is it bigger than a population two star, but smaller than a population four star? A star with at least three people? A star that has existed early in the universe? Or more famous than Chris Pine, but less famous than Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> So Chris Evans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some people Is might. Is there like a Chris scale for fame? Like uh, all the Chris's? It's the Chris scale. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, it was a star that has existed early in the universe. Uh, as far as we're aware, we haven't found any population three stars that are currently existing today. Most of them would have been very massive and have ceased to exist a long time ago. Our sun is a population one, population zero. I can't remember. Neat. <laughs> yeah. So sun's corona is, I guess, technically not on fire, but is definitely on fire. Uh, Neum, Team Rocket, Team Aqua, and then Amelia. And then, of course, they've got their streak going on, the sun's corona does of 8,000 points. Wow. How could an intermediate mass black hole form? The collapse of a cold hydrogen gas cloud, the collapse of a whole cluster of stars, the collapse of population three star, or all of the above. And this image right here, that is a picture of a supernova. That is the Crab Nebula right there. So it's a pretty picture. One of my favorite things to look at in space. It was a NASA photo. <laughs> It's, it's funny to look at because through <laughs> almost all the telescopes I've seen it through, it looks like this fuzzy little blob, but it's like that's a dead star, which is wild. Right? Yeah. Like that little fuzzy thing is an entire star that exploded and people witnessed it a thousand years ago, which is mind blowing. And then they wrote it down. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, actually, it was all of the above. So while it is really unsure, according to Dr. Scott Barrow's uh, talk that he gave, it's we're pretty unsure like exactly how they would form, but all of these are, you know, possibilities, and they could all possibly form a intermediate blast, uh, intermediate mass size black hole. So yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting to think of. And Team Rocket's climbing up again. They're on fire, right? So they lost their streak there for a second, but they're coming back. So better watch out, Suns Corona. <laughs> they're moving in. <laughs> All right. Which physicist was a producer for the 2014 movie Interstellar? Was it Albert Einstein, Scott Barrows, Kip Thorne, or Neil deGrasse Tyson? And then this was a picture released uh, for the movie poster right there that, of what they thought a black hole would look like. This movie, of course, came out before the uh, that other image, and they were actually pretty accurate. And yeah, it was actually Kip Thorne. 
uh, and Thorne was also uh, famous for the th theorizing the Thorne Zykov stars, which uh, astronomer Phil Massey at Lowell so takes part in studying. So, yeah. I'm glad none of you guessed Albert Einstein. I would have just been gone to shame. <laughs> He's been dead for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Suns Corona is still in the lead with Team Rocket still catching up pretty quickly. And then uh, Amelia Newm and Team Rocket, uh, Team Aqua, sorry, right behind. All right. All right, what makes a black hole? Well, black. Anish Kapoor painted it. It absorbs <laughs> all light that goes near it. It's made of ants or because it's, ex it's reflecting outer space. So uh, just to clarify, Anish Kapoor invented that Vanta Black, which is supposedly the blackest black paint that you can get, which is pretty black. <laughs> and then didn't he put like a monopoly on it or something? I, I am not sure, but that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty expensive to get your hands on, so. <laughs> but looks like most people got the correct answer. Yeah, it absorbs all light that goes near it. And, you know, the shortest possible way that you can describe it. <laughs> yeah, I think that is the most succinct way. <laughs> all right, the Sun's Corona is still in the lead. Team Rocket's right behind. Followed by Amelia, Team Aqua, and Mew. All right, which physicist was famously the first to solve Einstein's field equations in 1915? Was it Carl Schwarzschild, Albert Einstein, Heinz Doofenshmirtz, or Max Planck? So, and then that's a picture right there of Albert Einstein, a very famous picture of him just being a goofball. It's always nice to see scientists with personality. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was, it was Carl Schwarzschild, I can't say that. Schwarz, Schwarz. <laughs> I'm gonna get Carl off. S. Uh, Heinz Doofenshmirtz is not a real scientist. He's the bad guy in Phineas and Ferb. So, and then Max Planck is a really good guess, though. One of my favorite scientists. Honestly, yeah, Planck was a Planck was a real stand-up guy. I liked him. So, yeah, Sons of Corona. Oh man. They really want those gift cards. <laughs> and then a quick note though, um, we'll only be giving one or one set of gift cards to each person. So if you get first place both times, it'll go to the second place winner the second time. <laughs> so <laughs> no fear everyone else. All right, uh, how can we find black holes? Is it with spectroscopy? gravitational interactions, accretion disks, or all of the above. So, and then this is another concept and artistry of what a black hole might look like. This is one of my favorites, I think. I use this one all the time, I love it. <laughs> and yeah, it was all of the above. Neat. And then of course, now apparently we can take pictures of them, so. Yeah, it's really hard though, and you need telescopes all over the world. Yeah. All right, so the Sun's Corona is still in the lead, followed by Team Rocket, Amelia, Neum, and Team Aqua. I'm only under the impression that's how you say Neum. <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. <laughs> All right, which is the heaviest? Is it a neutron star, a supermassive black hole, a stellar mass black hole, or that scene in Futurama where Seymour is waiting in front of Panucci's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Some, no, oh wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a supermassive black hole. They are in fact the heaviest out of all of these, although some people would probably argue that the scene in Futurama might have been heavier. <laughs> yeah, and of course, supermassive black holes, as, we, as we've seen, they can get 40 billion times the size of our sun in mass. So, yeah, 
Noom is on fire. They're catching up again. Uh, so Suns Corona still in the lead with 13,000 points, followed by Team Rocket, Amelia, Noom, and Team Aqua. All right, only got a couple left. An Einstein Rosen bridge or a theoretical tunnel collecting two points in space time is more commonly known as a what? The time warp, the bifrost, a wormhole, or time and relative dimension in space. Is this picture what I think it is? It is, it's of something. <laughs> I believe it is of one of the answers. <laughs> that was the TARDIS, wasn't it? it? It's a TARDIS. That's what time and relative dimension in space stand for. Uh, the time warp is a dance. And of course, the Bifrost is what Thor takes to get to Midgard from Asgard. So in at least the Marvel comics, I'm not sure about in actual Norse mythology. <laughs> and then the TARDIS is from Doctor Who. Yeah. I got that one. <laughs> that reference. Oh yeah, Suns Corona is still in the lead with Team Rocket. Team Rocket is still trying to catch up. Will they be able to? I'm not too sure anymore. Uh, but then a long question. So <laughs> yeah. You mean, All right, last one. Where have mid-sized black holes been found? They're with all the snipes, in the Orion Nebula, in low-mass galaxies, or where we least expect? In my experience in science, you always find things where you least expect them. <laughs> Absolutely. And you never expect to find what you end up finding. Of course not. <laughs> that would make it all way too easy. Uh, yeah, so they have been, most of the ones that we have found have been found in low mass galaxies. Although we have speculated that there might be found um, like on the outskirts of other galaxies and some that are just too far away or too faint. We're still looking for them. They're pretty rare. And like, that was the point of uh, Dr. Barrow's talk was, where are they? Mm -hmm. I like to say mid mid-sized black holes are in fact snipes because snipe is something that you're looking for but can't be found. So, uh, but yeah, that was a uh, uh, that was that first quiz. So third place we have Amelia with fourteen thousand points, Team Rocket with fifteen thousand four hundred points, and then of course they almost got it. All right, and of course the Sun's Corona with fifteen thousand nine hundred fifty-eight points. Uh, so the Sun's Corona, you are the first place winner. So if you want to uh, get your prize, you're going to get a $10 gift card to Lowell Observatory's gift shop, as well as a $25 gift card to Mother Road Brewery, which you can uh, use online as well. And if you want to uh, receive your gift cards, you're just going to go ahead and email to info at lowell.edu. Uh, that's what you're going to send it to. You're going to send your name as well as your character name and then your final score. And then they will be in touch with you to get those sent to you. So, yep. so again, that's info at lowell.edu. And mm -hmm. for bookkeeping purposes, as we move on to our next two games, try and keep your name the same. Uh, we would mm -hmm. really appreciate that. So, Your names are all lovely as they are, and I wouldn't ask to change them one bit. We will move on to our next Kahoot. Great. This one will be from Dr. Kyler Kuhn's Meet an Astronomer talk, where he discussed uh, new technologies for studying, for studying um, the sky. And so we've got a different game pin here. Um, make this full screen. There we go. Um, so you've got a new game pin. We'll let people uh, come on in and join. For those of you who have just popped in, welcome. Uh, we here at Lowell Observatory are trying to keep some sense of normalcy. And uh, we're continuing our astronomy on tap, but virtually. We've partnered with Mother Road Brewery. Um, they're a local brewery here in Flagstaff. 
and they are currently offering dine-in and to-go services. So um, it, at their downtown location, they're offering dine-in. Their hours are uh, from Tuesday through Friday between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Saturdays, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And Mondays, they are closed. Um, at their Butler location, they're offering to-go services. Um, that's from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. They do ask that you stay home if you're feeling unwell. Uh, though they are sizing frequently touched surfaces every 30 minutes and are sanitizing tables, chairs, and iPads after every use. They also have hand sanitizer available and have spaced the tables six feet apart for social distancing. Uh, they do ask that you don't sit at an unbus table to order all food and drink at the bar and leave empty glassware at the edge of the table. As for our Kahoot game tonight, um, you're welcome to join us on www.kahoot.it, then enter in that game pin 8904715, and you will then join in our game. Um, we'll be playing this virtually. There is a bit of a time delay, so things might pop up on your second device where you're playing Kahoot uh, before they show up on our YouTube stream. So I would wait until uh, the answers pop up on our YouTube stream in order to answer correctly. Um, we just want to thank and again our prizes. What was that? I, I just said I just want to thank everyone who is joining, uh, people that have already been tuning in, as well as the new viewers as well. Thanks for hanging out with us on this uh, Thursday night. Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> Yeah, so again, our prizes are a $10 gift shop uh, gift card to our Lowell Observatory gift shop and a $25 gift card to Mother Road, uh, which you can use online as well. Uh, though it seems the Sun's Corona is back, um, they won the first game. So unfortunately, they can't win the second one. That means more chances for the rest of you all. We'll wait a couple more minutes. Alrighty, again, the um, join information, so the game pin will appear at the bottom of the screen uh, if you decide you want to join midway through. So let's go ahead and get started. Looks like we've got a lot of the same people from last time. Good to see everyone back, or almost everyone. It looks like Team Rocket is now Team Rocket! <laughs> More enthusiastic, <laughs> I like. So... <laughs> First question is, what was the first astronomical tool? We've got the human eye, binoculars, a telescope, or the 4.3 meter Lowell Discovery Telescope. What mm. was the first astronomical tool? The correct answer is in fact, the human eye. Congrats everyone. Yeah, the first astronomers, you know, didn't have all the tools that we, you know, that we've just been getting over the past couple centuries or so. And yeah, they would do make predictions for the weather and for farming and yeah, the seasons we're going to again. Um, the faster you answer a question, um, the more points you will score. So try to answer uh, faster than the sun's corona, and you will <laughs> uh, get more points. <laughs> All righty, let's go on to our next question. How long ago were telescopes invented? We got yesterday, 400 years ago, 300 years ago, or 200.375 years ago. Telescopes mm. um, made it very easy though for astronomers to start to see the night sky in more detail because they can zoom in just a little bit. Yep. Looks like uh, quite a few people got the, the, the correct answer of 400 years ago. And 400 years ago, we did.
didn't have quite the amount of technology we do today, and telescopes are rather particular with their optics, so the lenses and mirrors involved have to be a particular shape. Uh, I'm always baffled that 400 years ago people managed to make a working telescope. But it looks like Team Rocket has overtaken the sun's corona. Uh, we've got a battle here, though. They're <laughs> about 40 points apart, which is not much for Kahoot. <laughs> So very this, really this is unique and exciting game. <laughs> so our next question is what did Galileo discover around Jupiter? Were they asteroids, stars, moons, or aliens? Jupiter you can actually see with your naked eye in the night sky. It's relatively bright. Um, and it's generally up in the summer months, so we should be able to see it um, probably a little bit later into the night by now. I've started to see it like probably right, or, right, right around midnight or 11 o'clock, I can see it, and Saturn high in the sky. They're just to the left of Sagittarius right now in the southern sky. Mm -hmm. Neat. I really appreciate the one person that said Galileo discovered aliens around Jupiter. <laughs> Shout out to you. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> um, but yes, Ju Galileo did discover moons around Jupiter. He discovered four of them. Uh, Team Rocket still in the lead with the sun's corona and Amelia not too far behind. And then uh, Team Aqua and snails. But it looks like Book has a correct answer streak of three in a row. So hopefully we'll see book up here too. Our next question is what was used to take the first pictures through a telescope? Was it a CCD, film, silver salt, or an iPhone 5 camera? Hmm. I think it's funny that we all uh, carry around cameras in our pockets that are much more powerful than cameras say 50 years ago or even like 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, all of our cell phones have such, in such incredible cameras now. <laughs> Looks like there was some split between film and silver salts here, but the correct answer is in fact silver salt. In fact, it was a silver nitrate that was used. Well, I didn't even know that one, so I I thought it was the iPhone 5 there. <laughs> <laughs> An ancient relic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, looks like the Sun's Corona is back in the lead, followed by Snails and Jason Ox. Then we've got Team Rocket and Amelia. And then Combo <laughs> Breaker. Five players just dropped their answer streak of three. Oh, no. Oh. I messed oh. you all up. Sorry. That was a hard question. <laughs> It was. There's a couple tricky ones in here. What effect allows pixels in a CCD to record an image? We've got magic, the photoelectric effect, the photographic effect, or gravitational lensing. So a CCD is called the charge. A lot of cameras nowadays, including big fancy ones on the ends of telescopes and in a lot of our cell phones as well and they do work on the photoelectric effect. They are nowhere near massive enough to uh, take into account gravitational lensing, though that would be really, really awesome. <laughs> Looks like snails and Jason Ox have overtaken the sun's corona. Uh, the sun's corona is now followed by Team Rocket and Team Aqua. A CCD is made of what wafer-thin element? We've got carbon, titanium, plutonium, or silicon. Again, CCDs are what we find in most modern day cameras, uh, though not all. I'm like looking to see if one of the answers is in the picture, but none of those are in your picture there either. <laughs> I chose that. <laughs> 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 and the correct answer is silicon. Silicon is uh, what we call a semiconductor. So sometimes it behaves like a conductor. 
uh, but it's what we make most or a lot of uh, electronic equipment out of nowadays, that and copper. But CCDs are made of silicon. Jason Ox is now in the lead, followed by Snails, the Sun's Corona, and Team Rocket, and then Noom. I really like saying a lot of these names. They're fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, we got a lot of really creative ones. What special camera is extremely sensitive to red colors of light? We've got the ultra red camera, the extreme blue camera, the dark energy camera, or the iPhone 5 camera. The iPhone 5 camera again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's bound to be the correct answer one of these days. Eventually. The correct answer for something, probably. <laughs> Like the question, what camera's on the iPhone 5, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and the correct answer is, in fact, the dark energy camera. I tricked y'all. <laughs> I was guessing the ultra red, too. So um, I don't know if that's a real camera or not. I don't think so. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> It would be neat. It would make sense for this question. But in fact, it is the dark energy camera. Uh, this camera is in particular sensitive to very red colors of light. And that allows astronomers uh, to look into the very early days of our universe where things have been uh, stretched into the red wavelengths. So um, things that are very far away from us have had a lot of space between us and them that has gotten bigger and expanded that stretches the light of whatever distant object that is uh, into a more red color. Space is big and it's getting bigger. That's the, that's the gist of it. <laughs> yeah. um, no one got Jason any Ox, points for that one. Yeah, it looks like Jason, Jason Ox is in the lead followed by Snails, The Sun's Corona, Team Rocket, and Noom. Her next question is, what observatory discovered gravitational waves? We've got Virgo, LIGO, the Einstein Observatory, or Lowell Observatory. And it looks like you got a picture of a model of what gravitational waves, I guess, would look like. If we yeah. Could see. <laughs> There's two objects spiraling into each other, and so that's causing these tiny little ripples in space uh, emanating out from those two objects colliding. And the correct answer selected by everyone was LIGO. Uh, that is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. And in fact, I have a poster from LIGO sitting directly in front of me, which I just realized. I wasn't lying about being a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Jason Ox still in the lead, but followed not too far behind by Snails, and then the Sun's Corona, Team Rocket, and the Misters. Good to see some new names up there, too. Mm -hmm. What is on the end of the Lowell Discovery Telescope? The instrument cube, a spectrometer, a CCD, or the observer's eye? And we're talking about the back end of the telescope where all the light ends up. Mm -hmm. Also got a nice picture of the night sky here, including uh, the constellation Orion. The correct answer is the instrument cube. This is a big black box that we can plug different instruments into um, and then change between them relatively easily. I would like to argue that all of those answers were correct because on the back of that instrument cube are going to be a CCD and a spectrometer and sometimes an eyepiece that you'd be able to look through depending on uh, the time of the year, I guess. So. That is true. That is true. I should have <laughs> left one out and made an all of the above. Oops. <laughs> but this was part of the part of the talk that this okay. uh, yeah. trivia is based on. <laughs> so Snails is now in the lead, followed by Jason Ox, Team Rocket, The Sun's Corona, and The Misters. How do astronomers deal with gaps between CCDs? 
uh, machine learning, they put the CCDs right next to each other. They don't, or by taking multiple images in slightly different spots. Well, I know what I would do if I was one of the astronomers. Not deal with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, know how, I know how you work, Jose. <laughs> really? Uh, too bad. <laughs> yeah, there's just a dark line in your data. <laughs> The correct answer is by taking multiple images in slightly different spots. So you're going to have a gap between your two CCDs, and by shifting it over just slightly, then that gap will be right in the middle of the CCD, and you can take a picture of it. So by taking images in slightly different spots. <laughs> Machine learning would be a really cool thing uh, to do, though, mm -hmm. like kind of filling in the gaps. That'd be neat. Um, Snails is in the lead, followed by Jace Knox, Team Rocket, and the Sun's Corona, and then the Misters. It looks like someone called John Scary has a streak with three correct answers. Go John, Scary. <laughs> <laughs> what molecule in our atmosphere re-emits light at night? We've got OH, H2O, N2, and O3. I've always found pictures like this of uh, these cities at night to be really, really pretty, but also kind of sad because all of these bright lights mean you can't see the night sky nearly as well. So, of course, here in, Flagstaff, yeah, here in Flagstaff, we have our Dark Skies Coalition and our uh, Dark Skies uh, Ordinances. So we generally have a pretty, a pretty good night sky viewing here because we don't have a lot of those lights. Yep. The correct answer is OH, one oxygen and one hydrogen stuck together. They re-emit light at night that they absorb during the day. I think the term for that, the OH glowing in the atmosphere, like I think that's the sky glow, I think is what it's called. Um, um, possibly. Yeah. That term sounds familiar. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I came up with the wrong word for it. I actually don't know off the top of my head. I, I, you can see it, I think, with the naked eye, but I've only seen like images myself. Mm -hmm. uh, Snails is in the lead, followed by Team Rocket, and then Jason Ox, the Sun's Corona, and Noon. But it looks like Amelia's friend is climbing uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> Her next question is, which telescope uses exactly seven mirrors? We've got the Lowell Discovery Telescope, the Clark Telescope, the Very Large Telescope, or the Giant Magellan Telescope. Again, like, which telescope uses exactly seven mirrors? I just like how we name our telescopes sometimes, just based off of how big they are. Yeah, like this telescope is <laughs> really, really big. <laughs> like the Very Large or the Extremely Large Telescope. Kind Both of one of the telescopes. Oh no, sorry, <laughs> my cat's joined in. Hello, cat. <laughs> Her name is Jade, if anyone's wondering. Anyways, sorry about that. Um, the correct answer is, in fact, the Giant Magellan Telescope. The Very Large Telescope uses eight mirrors, not seven. But looks like Team Rocket is in the lead now, followed by Snails, Jason Ox, the Sun's Corona, and Noom. Hmm. What did Galileo name his discoveries around Jupiter after? Again, these are the four moons he found. Did he name them after his best friends, mythological creatures from Roman mythology, members of the Medici family, or he didn't name them? Well, I know how I would have named them. I would have named them myself. <laughs> oh. Well, that takes care of one. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is members of the Medici family. Uh, he originally named them after the family that paid his bills, um, but later the names were changed to mythological uh, creatures from Roman mythology to fit more with the rest of our solar system. Team Rocket is making a comeback, and they are in the lead, followed by Snails, Jason Knox, Sun's Corona, and Mew. Incidentally, all of Jupiter's moons are named after uh, his lovers in mythology, which is fun. Yeah. 
how many times a second does the human eye take a picture? So how many times in a second does your human eye take an image? I'm assuming you all are human. I don't know. Maybe you're an alien. Who knows? I'm not. Um, but how, the other way of thinking of this question is how much light can your eye take in at once? So what fraction of a second? Is it a fifth of a second, a twentieth of a second, a hundredth of a second, or a thousandth of a second worth of light? The correct answer is 20. Looks like we had a split between 20, 100, and 1,000. I was definitely guessing 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> it is a 20th of a second. Team Rocket maintains the lead, followed by Jason Ox, Snails, Noom, and the Sun's Corona. And our final question is, what did Einstein win the Nobel Prize for? Was it having amazing hair, explaining the photoelectric effect, or predicting the deflection of light from the sun, or general relativity? I mean, I know what he should have won a Nobel Prize for. Yeah, I think we all do. It's the hair. Right? <laughs> oh, I was thinking for like a cool picture you had. <laughs> the correct answer is explaining the photoelectric effect. Um, though he did also explain general relativity or propose the theory of general relativity and predict how light from the sun would be deflected um, during an eclipse. He won the, the Nobel Prize for explaining how electrons are ejected off the surface of materials. <laughs> And our podium here, we've got in third place, Snails. And in second place, Jason Ox. And in first place, we've got blah, 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 Team Rocket. Yay! All right. So um, again, Team Rocket, please email info, that's I-N-F-O, at lowell.edu um, to claim your prize. And again, your prizes are a $10 gift shop gift card gift card to the Lowell Observatory gift shop, tongue twister, um, and a $25 gift card to Mother Road Brewery, um, which you can also use online if you're not local to Flagstaff. But thank you so much for playing um, and congrats. Again, make sure to send an email to info, that's I-N-F-O at lowell.edu uh, with your name and your um, points, so the amount of points you scored um, in order to claim your prize. And as we move on to our final round of uh, trivia, make sure to or try to keep your same name. Um, the little additions like an exclamation point um, are more than welcome. Um, we just want to try and keep the same uh, nicknames for people so we can keep track of you. Uh, because now Team Rocket and the Sun's Corona can't win again. Uh, but someone else can. So we've still got more gift cards to um, to give out to our winners. Alrighty, our final Kahoot. If I can switch the tab, oh no. Um, ah. <laughs> then this other tab that I can't get to at the moment. Um, Oh, are you getting like the thing coming down the top of the screen? Ah, I got it. <laughs> I just had to close on my other one. We're good. All right. Oh, God. Silence, Kahoot. All righty. So, welcome again, everyone. Uh, for our final game here, we've got a new game pin. So, go ahead and join on www.kahoot.it. Um, our game pin this time is 1875035. And so can, again, we're gonna make a keep ah, we're gonna give it a few minutes so people that can join in uh, can do so. And we'll keep that open again, even though automatically uh, change your name if you choose something that is uh, not clean. Uh, just something to keep in mind when you're naming your name if you are joining us for the first time and if uh 
And it seems like the people that have joined us for the second time already seem to know the drill. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they're, they're experts by now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are partnering with Mother Road Brewery for this uh, virtual trivia night. Um, they're a local brewery in Flagstaff. Uh, we're giving them a shout out tonight. They're offering a dine-in at their downtown location. Uh, those, that is, um, sorry, their hours are uh, Tuesday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m., Sunday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., and Mondays, they are closed. At their Butler location, though, uh, they're offering to-go services from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. They do ask to stay home and visit them another time if you are feeling unwell at all um, to help keep everyone healthy. They are, however, sanitizing frequently used surfaces uh, every 30 minutes and are sanitizing tables, chairs, and iPads after every use. They also have hand sanitizer available and have space tables apart six feet uh, to allow for some social distancing. Uh, they do ask that you don't sit at an unbussed table, um, allow for all, or sorry, to order all food and drink at the bar, and to leave empty glassware at the edges of the table. Here on Kahoot tonight, uh, we do ask that you use a, that you choose a clean nickname, um, though Kahoot will choose one for you automatically if um, you don't. <laughs> um, we are dealing with a bit of a time delay here, so we've got about uh, five, ten seconds between what shows up on YouTube and what shows up on Kahoot. So uh, things on Kahoot might pop up before things on YouTube. Uh, wait for stuff to show up on YouTube first, because um, otherwise you might choose the wrong answer inadvertently. <laughs> um, and we've got our final trivia this evening from Dr. Jennifer Hanley's uh, Meet an Astronomer Talk About Salts Across the Solar System. So it looks like we've got about 10 players. Joe, shall we begin? Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. All right, would you like to take away the first question? I will go ahead and take it away. Once it appears. <laughs> All right, first question. This dwarf planet has prominent bright spots that I realize I can't see it because I have some stuff in the way. Uh, bright spots that maybe salt deposits, Pluto, Ceres, Vesta, or salt, no, salt DNA. <laughs> salt DNA. <no. laughs> Could be it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so most people, it was a little bit of a split between Pluto and Ceres, and most people did get Ceres, which was the correct answer. It is the only official dwarf planet in our asteroid belt. And, uh, yeah, those salts are kind of famous now, so. Yeah. Or those bright spots. So Team Rocket is, Team Rocket with a rocket now, is now in the lead, followed by, uh, Dingo, Jason, Ox, and Book. <laughs> nice. It's good to see familiar names and some new names as well. In Greek mythology, Poseidon lost a contest in this city by creating a well of salt water. We've got Athens, Sparta, Thebes, or Atlantis. Thebes, Thebes. You know, there are sometimes you realize you've only ever read a word and never said it or heard it aloud. I'm having one of those moments right now. <laughs> I think it might be Thebes, but I really it don't. It like the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, the correct answer is Athens. Um, I believe he lost that contest to Athena. Yeah, and so then they ended up naming the city after Athena. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Noom is now in the lead, followed by Dingo, Book, Team Rocket, and then Amelia's friend. The presence of salts can increase the stability of liquid water by lowering the freezing point. 
raising the boiling point, slowing evaporation, or all of the above. So how can salts increase the stability of liquid water? I have like so many facts I want to give, but I'm afraid they're part of the quiz, so I'm going to just not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this particular quiz was created by our uh, friend and coworker, Kevin White, who's also an educator with us at Lowell. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the correct answer was all of the above. Uh, so most of the people got that, although uh, lowering the freezing point got a lot of people answering that one as well. It's intuitive to me. To Presence can increase, or can, so you weren't wrong if you chose lowering the freezing <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like Noom, Noom is followed by Book, who is on fire, Amelia, and then Amelia's friend, and Dingo. <laughs> Our next question is, the process of absorbing water vapor from air and dissolving in it is called being foiled by your own evil scheme, curse you meddling kids and your dog, wick, wicked witchitis, aerohydrophilia, or deliquescence. There are many tongue twisters here. <laughs> Ooh. I, want, I don't know the answer to this one. Huh. It is it deliquescence. That's a fun word. You can say it if you want to sound smart. <laughs> and now you know it's the process of absorbing water vapor um, and dissolve from the air and dissolving in it. Looks like Noom is still in the lead, followed by Book, Amelia, Amelia's friend, and Bingo. In Roman mythology, the goddess of salt water is Vesta, Silesia, Hera, or the girl with the umbrella on the salt packages. I always admired that girl's sense of style, a girl in the salt packages. She's got like this cute oh, little yeah. yellow dress. I just love how the Romans have a deity for literally everything. Yeah, they're like, mm, salt water. Needs a god. <laughs> Who's the so, charge of that one? <laughs> the correct answer is Cilicia. Sure. <laughs> Sounds about right. I never know that. But Something that is salacious has a lot of- And it looks like Noom is still in the lead. Oh, fun fact. So Noom is still in the lead, followed by Book, Amelia, Amelia's friend, and the Misters, who are on fire with an answer streak of three. All right. NaCl or YaCl, different salts change freezing temperatures by different amounts. So it's one of those two I think you have to choose from. <laughs> or you can approve or object to the incredibly bad pun. I strongly approve of this incredibly bad pun. So I object, so. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we did get more approvals than objections, but <laughs> People also guess the correct answer or chose the correct answer of yes or yeah. So. All right. <laughs> Noom is in the lead, followed by Amelia, Amelia's friend, Book, and the Misters. The dome of this telescope for a time floated on salt water. Lowell Observatory's Clark Telescope, Lowell Observatory's Pluto Discovery Telescope, Palomar Observatory's Hale Telescope, or Korean Astrophysical Observatory's Gregory Shan Telescope. I think I mispronounced something. I'm gonna, we're gonna go with it. But the correct answer is in fact Lowell Observatory's own Clark Telescope uh, for quite some time in order to to move the very heavy roof of the telescope, they floated it on a moat of heavily salted water in order to keep it from freezing in our frigid Flagstaff winters. 
it was it was not a good idea and so we don't do that anymore <laughs> correct <laughs> yeah that looks, yeah, looks like Neil is still in the lead followed by amelia amelia's friend team rocket with a rocket emoji and book all right uh, organisms that thrive in salt-rich environments are called halophiles, nachophiles, selenophiles, or internet trolls. And I'm not sure what body of water that is, but in the background there. I mean, my guess would be Salt Lake. I was thinking that, but I'm from Salt Lake and that didn't look like it. <laughs> Looks but like I there were two wrong. correct answers, though. <laughs> Halophiles and internet trolls. Oh, internet trolls. <laughs> I mean, oh, they I do thrive in very salty environments, but anyways. I was thinking selenophiles, but... Oh. It, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> New Mazon is in the lead still, followed by Team Rocket, Book, Amelia, and Amelia's friend. This type of salt can be used as rocket fuel. Got pyrochlorate, teoxyhydrolinaxazine, perchlorate, and rocket salt. <laughs> this one is just full of me mispronouncing things, and I deeply apologize. <laughs> the oh. correct answer is perchlorate. Which Looks makes like our ranks still stand with Noom in the lead, followed by Team Rocket, Book, Amelia, and Amelia's friend. All right, the thickness of the icy crust of this world may be partly depend on the types of salts in it. Phobos, Io, Europa, or your ex that you left because they're cold and also a moon of Jupiter. <laughs> I mean, I guess your ex could be kind of salty too if you're a dime and you left them. Oh, I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the correct answer is Europa. Um, with seven, uh, seven people guessed that one correctly there. Or so. chose, maybe they knew it. You're right, they did know it. <laughs> I have faith in you all. And uh, Noom is still in the lead. They're on fire with their streak again. Uh, Team Rocket, Book, Amelia, and Amelia's friend leading behind. Our next question is, this movie's final battle takes place in a basin covered in salt. We've got Rebel A Salt, Bonnie and Nuckly, <laughs> The Last Jedi, and Sergeant Salt's Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> I can't get over Bonnie and the Clyde. How many of those are real movies? <laughs> I mean, I guess The Last Jedi was the only one without a salt pun. And that was the correct answer. Uh, when watching that, I thought that red was just like blood. And it turns oh, out God. it was just like red salt. <laughs> <laughs> it was just red salt. Oh, boy. Much more so, PG. You maintain the lead, Team Rocket uh, following close behind, and then book Amelia and Amelia's friend. <laughs> Salts can help tell us the history of Steven Spielberg's filmography, lakes, comets, or the gas giants. The answer is lakes. Yeah, so incidentally, the lakes generally, as they get older, they're gonna probably lose a little bit of water as it evaporates in the salinity, the salt's gonna stay the same. So the salinity is gonna get higher. And it's kind of what happened with the Great Salt Lake. Again, I'm, I'm from there. So uh, it was under, uh, the whole region of that area was under a huge ocean called Lake Bonneville. And all that's left of it is this really salty lake. 
fascinating. <laughs> I know a lot about it. <laughs> uh, so it looks like Newm's in the lead with 9,009 points. It's fun palindrome right there. Uh, Book uh, is uh, second behind. They're on fire, still with that five correct streak, uh, followed by Team Rocket, Amelia, and Amelia's friend. The root of this word is the Latin word for salt. Conspiracy, ocean, salary, and YouTube comment section. Hmm. Gonna see a lot of here, I'm sure. <laughs> and yeah, it looks like the correct answer is salary. I'm interested in how we got that, like salary to mean what it means today with that Latin root there. I want to say at one point people were paid in salt. Oh. Where like salt was so valuable that basically you were getting paid in salt, but I don't know for sure. You think I can pay my landlords in salt? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Depends how old school they are. <laughs> Looks like Noom is in the lead, followed by Book, Team Rocket, Amelia, and Amelia's friend. Natural right, nat perchlorates can be found in uh, many extreme deserts, such as the Atacama Desert, Texas, Siberia, and my heart. It's Texas. <laughs> Reminds me of favorite summer camp director of mine. No. Todd Gonzalez. Our summer camp director up at Lowell Observatory is from Texas and she never fails to remind us. But the correct answer is the Atacama. Sorry, Kelly. Looks like Neum is still in the lead, followed by Book, Team Rocket, Amelia, and then Amelia's friend. This component of table salt can explode if it contacts water, chlorine, sodium, hydrogen, or dynamite. <laughs> Remember, it's a component of table salt. Yep. I cannot think of any puns without giving this away, so. <laughs> it's a explosive reaction. That was bad. Sorry. <laughs> but the correct answer is sodium. And this was our final question. So let's head to the podium. So with nine out of 15 points correct, we got Team Rocket with a rocket emoji, uh, Book with 12 out of 15 points, and then <laughs> with 13 out of 15 points. <laughs> yep, so again, new, make sure to email info at lowell.edu, that's I-N-F-O at lowell.edu in order to claim your prize. Make sure to include your name and how many points you scored um, in order to add. make sure we get your prize, which is a $10 gift card to the Lowell Observatory gift shop. Uh, and a $25 gift card to Mother Road. Again, we are uh, partnering with Mother Road Brewery, a local brewery here in Flagstaff, um, and we're giving them a shout out today. So their downtown location is doing dine-in uh, Tuesday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m., Sunday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., and Mondays they are closed. At their Butler location, they are offering to go from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. They ask you to not go and visit them another time if you're feeling unwell. Santa, uh, though they are sanitizing frequently used surfaces um, every 30 minutes. They are also sanitizing tables, chairs, and iPads uh, after each use. And they're offering um, hand sanitizer available to you. Um, and their tables are spaced six feet apart to allow for social distancing. Uh, they ask that you don't sit at an unbussed table 
uh, to order all food and drink at the bar, and uh, to leave empty glassware at the edge of the table. Again, thank you all so much for help uh, for having fun with us tonight uh, with our Astronomy on Tap trivia. Um, we really appreciate you all um, having fun with us today. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so before we uh, take off and leave, I just want to also remind you all that tonight at 9 p.m. we have another live stream uh, for our interactive stargazing, where they're probably going to be out at our brand new Giovanni Open Deck Observatory, uh, which we finally get to go back to and use, and we can we'll have some pretty pictures of some live astronomical objects. We should go and ask them some questions and talk to them over at that live stream as well. See some real telescope images live. Yeah. Close with, to our, live. Uh, with our fancy new telescopes. Our shiny new telescopes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you all again for, for having fun with us tonight. We hope to see you all again next time. Yeah. <laughs> we hope to make this a rather regular, regular occurrence. Mm -hmm. So keep watching those uh, other live or our other videos that we have um, from our meet and astronomers and our cosmic coffees because that's what our quizzes are usually based off of, and uh, that we have a higher chance of getting the gift card next time. <laughs> if you would like to hear more of my voice, I will be the guest of uh, one of our upcoming cosmic coffees as well, so you can hear me talk about um, an interesting picture I took and how it took storm across the internet and how our equipment has changed up at Lowell Observatory over the past year or so. That'll be June 25th. All right.